The situation in Israel just got more complicated for the United States. As though it wasn't bad enough with rockets raining around on, on all different parts of Israel and the Gaza Strip and hundreds of people being killed, thousands now being wounded. I think over 6,000 was the last number I saw. We now have confirmation from the White House that the United States is now uh, involved in a way we did not imagine and certainly would have not liked. Uh, just moments ago, the president said this. We now know that American citizens are among those being held by Hamas. I've directed my team to share intelligence and deploy additional experts from across the United States government to consult with and advise Israeli counterparts on hostage recovery, recovery efforts. All right, look, we, we just got to acknowledge something here right off the top. And, and I, I want to kind of go into a bit of a deep dive here on explaining kind of what's at stake here and, and what the challenges are and what the possibilities for success may be, because every American wants all of our people home. It's, it's kind of a, as, while I was in service, it was, you know, like an article of faith. Nobody gets left behind. We don't leave anyone behind. And so now then in a, in a combat zone, the, Israel has outright declared war. Our people have been taken hostage by the enemy force. So the question is, what do we need to do to get them back? What are the prospects and what might it take? Well, first of all, the, the news is not good, I'm afraid. I, I don't know that Hamas actually intended to take Americans. I think that they were just grabbing people in, in different areas and they didn't distinguish who they were. They didn't find out because they didn't know who would be any place at a given time. But now then the United States is that that poses both a problem and a possibility for Hamas because that may give them more leverage, but it also may put them more in the in the crosshairs. And we don't know yet which way they're going to view this. But here's what we can here's what we do know, what we can count on. Almost certainly uh, all of these hostages and apparently there's up to 150 total hostages, maybe even more. No one really has a solid number right now, but we now do know there's at least that many Americans. Uh, Hamas came, one of their primary targets when they broke through the fence was they sent one group out to just cause mayhem and, and killing people left and right just to cause terror. And then they had other groups that were designed to go and grab hostages and then get them back into the Gaza Strip as fast as possible. Once they were in there, now then they have gone basically like cockroaches under the sink. You, you have no idea where they went when they went back in there. Most likely they have been spread out throughout the entire uh, district of Gaza, throughout the whole strip. And, and it, they could be in tunnels somewhere. They could be in basements. They could be in the top of high rises. No one really knows where any of them are. In fact, no one does know where any of them are at the moment. But we do know that they're almost certainly put in positions that Hamas has specifically selected, places that has uh, ability to observe any ingress routes so they could see if any Israeli uh, attempts to rescue hostages are coming, and they'll have the, the the routes probably mined with the improvised explosive devices, or they may have snipers out in the area, and they certainly will have lookouts. So we, based on how Hamas has uh, performed since they've opened this operation on a tactical level, has been very sophisticated, very coordinated, and very well thought out. We can only expect that the same is true for their defensive preparations. And as, as uh, Israel is contemplating a ground incursion, I'm sure that uh, Hamas has thought very well about how Israel is going to operate, how they've done it in the past, and they probably have countermeasures. And specifically for the hostages, they're going to put them in places to where it's nearly impossible for Israel to come and rescue them. Now, one of the primary things that, that is necessary for any operation to, to capture or, or to recapture hostages is obviously you got to first know where they are. But second, you have to have good intelligence to be able to know what the environment is. And that is profoundly difficult in this situation now because Israel has lost most of its eyes and ears. And they certainly don't have access to any human intelligence, any operatives on the ground, or it's going to be very limited at any rate. Now, they'll have satellite photography. They'll certainly be flying drones over every square inch of that place to try to map it out. And they'll be looking for everything. But Hamas is aware of that. So they probably will not be moving in areas in ways that can be detected, which means that we probably aren't going to know where any of these hostages are. If we do find them, then the question is, as the president said, he's uh, sending some hostage negotiation teams and potentially some advisors on how to, uh, you know, snatch and grab hostages. And certainly we have that capacity. We've done it many times in our own forces uh, throughout the world in different places. 
but that is a very high risk operation. And, and what the White House is not going to risk is to have some sort of, you know, quick effort to try and go in and get somebody that ends up getting them killed because that's worse than what's the situation we have now. And Israel's under the same situation for all the hostages of their people that have been taken. They can't, you know, rush to failure as, as we used to say in the military, you have to have a plan. It's got to be well thought out, well rehearsed. It's got to have great intelligence and it has to be, you have to be able to determine there's a good chance of success. Otherwise it's going to be down to negotiations. And then that's the next challenge. What are what is Israel willing to talk about? What is the United States willing to talk about to get our people back? You know, we all have a standing uh, uh, mantra. We don't negotiate with terrorists. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has already categorically said we're not negotiating anything with Hamas. And so now then that appears to have closed off that route. But there are some reports out today that actually there are some behind the scenes talks. And I certainly hope that's the case because it's, it's paramount important to get these people back uh, so that no more innocent civilians die. But there's two reasons why Hamas would have done this, what they would have taken hostages, while that was a primary objective for their, for their operation. Number one is because it's going to uh, put a big inhibition on the Israeli attempt to storm the place. So they can't just send in a bunch of troops and just go on this big, you know, rampaging attack because then the hostages can be killed in the process anyway. Or as Hamas has threatened, they may execute the hostages. So that's a, that's a, going to put the brakes on at least an initial decision whether or not uh, Israel should go in, whether the IDF should launch an attack or not. But the second thing is uh, Hamas wants to leverage those. So they actually do want negotiations because they want to get some of their prisoners back that Israel's holding, some 5,000 of them. And they say that they want to get them all back. Now, obviously, that puts a huge conundrum on uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and his government. Because if they make a negotiated deal to get all the citizens back and look, some of these, there's some old women, there's some little kids. I, I understand that the, the youngest that they know about so far is nine months old. So there is an excruciating desire by all of Israeli society to get those people back unharmed. And so they're going to want that. But there's also this desire not to give in to the to terrorist desires and give them, you know, these people who are in prison because they have been guilty of, of crimes against Israel. And they've probably taken part in terrorist operations before. So they don't want to give experienced terrorists back into the camp of Hamas. And, and it's just a, a really, really difficult, excruciating dilemma for the leadership, both uh, in, in Jerusalem as well as in Washington. Because you can't aid the, the terrorists by giving them more strength and power and people who can help conduct more operations. But you also can't let your people go. And we have never been in a situation like this in modern times where what if Hamas now says, OK, you start making deals or we're going to start killing them one at a time and we're going to do it on air. And these people have shown that they have no inhibitions. They don't care about their own lives. They don't care about the lives of innocent people on the Israeli side. They don't care about the, the, their own citizens. They're hiding in places where they know that when Israel fires these launch these rockets, they end up falling in places where Palestinians are. So they're they're Everybody's getting killed in the crossfire. And, and Hamas doesn't care. Truly, all evidence points to that they have hardened their minds and made a decision before the first round was fired that they're all in and, and they don't care if they die or not. Apparently up to 1,500 have already been killed of the, of the Palestinian, uh, of the Hamas gunmen. We don't know how many are left. We don't know how many they still have, but it's, it's a, certainly a, a significant number of them. So unfortunately, the situation does not look good for the hostage. I, I don't think anyone should expect this to be resolved anytime soon. And it's just tragic because the Israeli government has cut off all the water, all the, uh, the food, all the fuel, everything, the electricity to the Gaza Strip. And right now, nobody's getting anything. And unfortunately, we can count on that the hostages are also going to be uh, kept in that same condition. As long as the Palestinian people don't have food and water and electricity, then probably the hostages aren't going to be fed either. And that's going to put the screws to getting something figured out pretty quick. And unfortunately, I just want everybody to know there's not a lot of good news in this and, and we should not have very high hopes. We should do everything we can. If if you're a praying person, then you should pray to God because that's probably right now is the best hope that anybody has. Uh, and we're going to keep watching this. And as any situation changes, I'll bring you updated information. But that's where the situation is with the hostages as of now. 
And uh, we'll uh, talk to you on the next episode. See you later.